Hello, this is Dr. Ron Dalton Jr. and in this video we're going to be talking about naproxen and basically we're going to talk about everything that you need to know before taking this medication. So we'll first talk about what the medication does and how it works. We'll talk about um, any drug interactions that may take place. So, you know, for example, if there's any other medications that you're taking, you want to make sure that it's not going to interact with those. We'll talk about any interactions with other nutritional supplements. And we'll also talk about some natural alternatives that you can take if you you, uh, are one of those people that likes to look at those types of things. So to begin with, let's talk about what naproxen is. First of all, it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and more commonly we refer to these as NSAIDs. And basically the common names of naproxen would include Aleve, Anaprox, uh, Neprolan, and Naproxen. So if you're on any of those medications, that's what you're taking. The use for naproxen is that it's used to relieve pain, tenderness, swelling, and stiffness caused by osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that's basically just another form of arthritis where the um, ligaments in the front or the back of the spine will start to develop calcium deposits there and it'll fuse your spine together eventually. It's also used for shoulder bursitis, tendonitis, gouty arthritis, menstrual pain, headaches, muscle aches, toothaches, back pain, and fever. So there's definitely a number of different uses for this medication. And the way that it works is it actually will affect, affect the inflammatory process. And the way that it does that is by blocking an enzyme called cyclooxygenase, which is an enzyme that produces prostaglandins. Now, I understand that, you know, this is chemistry, so it may sound a little bit odd to you, but I'm going to show you a picture in a minute just to explain how this actually works. Um, what prostaglandins are, though, is they're chemicals that are produced by the body during an inflammatory response, and they're responsible for causing you pain. So the way this, mes this medication works is by blocking that process from taking place. Now, let's talk first for a minute about what inflammation actually is, and then we'll talk about how the drug works. Whenever you have an injury, what's going to happen is that those tissues that are affected are going to tear. And inside the wall of your cells, you have this thing called arachidonic acid. So if the cells are actually injured or damaged, the arachidonic acid is going to be released into the bloodstream and then what happens is that your body has to get rid of that somehow. And the way that it does that is by breaking that chemical down. Well, when it breaks it down, what happens is that the body produces this thing called prostaglandins and prostaglandins are what cause all of the pain and the swelling and all the inflammation that takes place after an injury that you experience. Now one key thing that I want to point out here is that arachidonic acid doesn't just develop because of an injury. This can also be something that's a chronic inflammatory process within the system. And what they've actually found is that over time, if you live in this type of a situation for too long, um, a buildup of arachidonic acid and uh, the development of the inflammatory process throughout the body can actually lead to other more serious health problems such as heart disease, cancers, lung diseases, and that sort of thing. So, in that situation, however, the reason the ar arachidonic acid is being produced is not because of cell damage or damage to an injured area, but it's usually related to your diet. So we'll talk about that in a little bit also. But basically, what um, this medication does is it blocks these enzymes that are designed to break down arachidonic acid, and that's why the prostaglandins, prostaglandins are not produced, and that's the way that the medication actually works here. Now with the recommended dosages, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this written out for you in an article and at the end of this video I'll give you a website link that you can go to where all of this is written out for you so we don't have to go through it in great detail. Um, but one thing I do want to point out is that with naproxen you do not want to take it longer than 10 days at a time and there's a very important reason for that. When we talk about the side effects of this medication, that's when this is all going to make sense. So this is not a medication that's designed for you to be on for the long term. If you're taking it for fever, you don't want to take it more than three days. If the fever still per persists after three days, then you need to contact your doctor about that because there's something wrong in that case. Now the drug interactions and contraindications, there's actually quite a few. And on that article that I'm going to redirect you to at the end of this video, I'll have all of these listed out for you. But basically, there's a couple of types of medications that will interact with naproxen. And typically, you're looking at heart medications. So for example, medications for blood pressure, medications for heart arrhythmias, 
cholesterol medications will interact with naproxen. Um, lithium is another one, and lithium is actually a medication that's used for people who have bipolar disorder. Um, and also anticoagulants, so things like warfarin. If you have a problem with blood clotting, then typically that's the medication that they're going to give you, and that will also interact with naproxen, so you cannot mix the two together. The other type of medications that will interact with these are other pain relieving medications, so things like ibuprofen, um, you know, or corticosteroids, for example, interact with this medication. So you have to be really careful that you're not taking those with this medication as well. Um, there's some other ones, for example, methotrexate, which is used for rheumatoid arthritis, that will interact as well, antidepressants, and there's also a number of nutritional supplements that will interact with this medication also, and the big issue with nutritional supplements is that when you take them in combination with this medication, it can actually increase the risk of internal bleeding, which is a very serious side effect, and that can actually kill you, so you need to be real careful about this. As you can see, the list of nutritional supplements that will interact with naproxen is actually quite large. And like I said, I'm going to have all of this listed out for you in that article so that you can review these and you'll see what they're used for. And if you're taking any of them, make sure that you're aware that you do not want to be mixing these if you're taking naproxen as well. Now the side effects, there's quite a few. However, what we want to talk about first are the most serious ones. Um, People who take naproxen have a higher risk of developing a heart attack or a stroke. And this is especially true if you're a smoker or if you take it for a long period of time. And remember what I was saying earlier that you don't want to take it any more than 10 days at a time. So this is not a medication that you want to take on a regular basis and it's for this reason. It's also a higher risk if you have a family history of heart disease or high blood pressure. The other side effect that can be very serious is ulcers in the digestive system. You can get bleeding from that and it can also develop holes in the stomach or intestines. And this is especially true if you're older or if you drink more than three glasses of alcohol per day. So it's a really good idea that if you're taking this medication, do not drink with it. And one other tip that I can give you here, because a lot of times you can develop ulcers or bleeding in the small or in the um, digestive tract, and you won't develop any pain or symptoms from it. One thing you can do though is when you go to the bathroom, and when you have a bowel movement, look at the stool that comes out. If you see that it's a dark black color, that's a sign that you actually have bleeding, especially in the upper GI tract, which is the stomach and the small intestine, because what that is, is that's actually clotted blood that's being released within your system. So if you see that, that's a sign that you need to talk to your doctor right away and you need, need to top, stop taking this medication. It can lead to another a number of other side effects also, such as colon problems like diarrhea, constipation and gas, sores in the mouth, excessive thirst, headache, dizziness. Um, all of these things can come from taking naproxen, and I'll have the complete list for you in that article, just like we discussed just a minute ago. Now, there are some alternatives to taking naproxen, and Obviously, what we want to do is we want to address the inflammatory process because that's what this medication is working on. Now, out of everything that I've ever seen in my practice experience with patients, the one thing that I have found to be the most effective for dealing with pain or inf inflammation is ice and heat. However, you have to know when to use these and you have to use them properly. Now, because this medication is primarily taken for patients who have arthritic conditions, in that type of a case, heat is usually going to be best. But there's a little test that I'm going to have you do in order to find out which one is the best option for you so that you do this right. Because if you do this wrong, you can actually make the pain worse. So here's what you want to do. First of all, you want to go ahead and start with ice. And the reason I say that is because if you have an injury and you're thinking of taking this medication, usually ice is going to be the best option for you. And here's the way that you do that. You want to use real ice. So go ahead and just get a baggie and fill it with ice from your freezer. Don't use substitutes such as frozen vegetables or ice packs or anything of that nature. You want to use real ice. And the reason we recommend that you do that is because ice will actually maintain the same temperature throughout the entire treatment and that's really important. Then you want to put a towel over the affected area and then put the ice directly on there. Leave the ice on for 15 minutes maximum or until you feel numbness in the area, whichever comes first. Take it off for an hour and then repeat the ice treatment again and you want to do that as many times during the day as you possibly can. Now what we're going to do though is we want to test this, we want to see how you feel with it. So once you've done the ice treatment three or four times, 
stop and see how you feel. If you feel better, go ahead and stick with the ice. If it feels about the same or if it feels worse, now you're going to discontinue the ice and you're going to use heat instead. And typically, especially if you're dealing with something like arthritis, a dry heat is going to feel better to you. So basically what that means is that if you just get an electric heating pad from any drugstore, that's usually what will work best for you. Now with the heat, you're going to follow the same rules. You want to put it on for 15 minutes, take it off for an hour and then repeat it every single hour as long as you're having symptoms. If the ice doesn't help or if it makes it worse, typically the heat is going to make you feel a lot better. One or the other usually works, but don't mix the two, okay? And I know I'm saying a lot, I'm giving you a lot of information in this video, and that was probably a lot to digest there. So if you go to that page that I'm gonna give you in a little bit, if you look to the left of the video, I have a free ebook that I offer for my customers. And in there, um, I have all of the details about how to do this ice and heat test written out for you so that you can follow along with it a little bit easier there. The next alternative, and this is actually a really good option, is something called proteolytic enzymes. Now, these are not the enzymes that you think about when you think about digesting food. These are enzymes that will pass through the bloodstream, they'll go to the inflamed area, and what they do is they will actually break down all of those chemicals that are being produced, like the arachidonic acid, but they do it in a natural way so that you don't experience the pain like you do if you have the prostaglandins that are developing. Um, there's one brand in particular that I really, really recommend, and it's called Heal and & Soothe, and if you go to that article that I'm going to give you a link to in a minute, you'll see that I have a link there that uh, you can go to to find out more about Healing Soothe, but that's, in my mind, the best one. Uh, the next thing you can do is something called probiotics, and you can find these at any health food store. But what you want to do if you're inflamed is you want to take four times the recommended amount on the bottle per day. And what that will do is something very similar. It's also going to help to break down those inflammatory chemicals so that you get pain relief more quickly. The next thing you want to do is take vitamin D3, but you want to take it at a, at a higher dosage. Um, what I recommend is that you take 20,000 international units per day. And I realize that that sounds like a lot. However, um, when you get this at the health food store, you'll see that they're just little tiny tablets, and you just take four of those tablets per day. And so it's really, it's really not quite a bit. But the reason we're taking this in such a high dosage is because vitamin D3 at that dosage will act as, an, as a strong antioxidant. And when your body is going through an inflammatory process, it will produce something called free radicals. Now, free radicals are kind of scary because those are the things that are known to cause different types of cancers. So we want to get rid of those. We want to break those down. And that's what the vitamin D will do for you if you take it at that higher dosage. Now, if you have a chronic infl inflammatory condition, so for example, if, if you're dealing with an arthritic condition and you've had it for a number of years, or let's say you do have one of the situations that we talked about earlier, such as heart disease, cancer, lung diseases. Um, another thing in this group would be things like allergies, asthma, that sort of thing. If you're dealing with a chronic inflammatory condition, then we need to look at your diet. And obviously this is never a fun thing to talk about because we all love our food. <laughs> but um, these are the things that you need to do if you're looking to address that. The first and most important thing is to eliminate all sugar from your diet. And I can't stress this enough. If you do nothing else that I'm going to talk about in this video, this is the one thing I would encourage you to do because sugar is um, stimulatory to the inflammatory process. It'll basically egg it on and make it worse, and you're going to feel a lot worse. But if you stop having the sugar in your diet, you'll feel better more quickly. The next thing you want to do is to eliminate white flour from your diet. So white breads, pastas, that sort of thing. And a good rule of thumb to follow is this. If you're reading a label on a food item at a grocery store, and if it has more than six grams of carbs, I wouldn't eat it because the carbohydrates is actually what will stimulate the inflammatory process and also the chemicals that are used to process the flour in order to create white flour. So you want to avoid those things. The next thing you want to do is to increase your fruits and vegetables. And I have a little trick with this because I know that for a lot of people, this is one of the hardest things to do because many people just don't like to eat fruits and vegetables. So what I have is I actually have found a product that I personally use every day. It's called the Nutribullet. And basically what it is is it's, it's a special type of a blender, but you make a fruit and vegetable drink with it, and it has a special blade on it that will actually 
bring out all of the natural nutrients and vitamins that you find within the fruits and vegetables so your body can absorb it more easily. Now this is really important because if you're getting all the nutrients from your fruits and vegetables and if you're getting all the fiber, number one, the nutrients are going to help to cleanse your system and the fiber is also going to help you go to the bathroom a little bit more easily. So it really, really cleanses you and it will help reduce that inflammatory process that we've been talking about through this video. Now what I do with my Nutribullet is I make a drink every day and what I put in there is spinach, apple, pear, pineapple, and banana and that drink is designed to cleanse your body. But if you're going through an inflammatory process and you're trying to reduce inflammation, what you also want to do is to add an inch of fresh ginger root because that will act as a natural anti-inflammatory and it will work a lot better for you in that case. If you're dealing with a problem that's been there for a long time, and it's a more serious type of a condition, what I would recommend that you do is drink two of those per day. Do one in the morning and one at night. And if you're just trying to maintain your health like what I'm doing, then you just want to do one a day. Okay, um, so that pretty much covers everything about naproxen and some of the alternatives that you can look into. If you'd like more information or if you want all of those details that I said would be written out for you, this is the web page that you want to go to. It's hillyourbulgingdisc.com slash naproxen.html. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, if you look directly below the video, you'll see a link in the description of the video there that you can just click on and it should take you right to that page. All right, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you found the information useful and have a great day.